You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MissArtastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MissArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MissArtastic.com now. Kids, a complete guide for teachers. So art is an essential part of a kid's uh, art edu- or sorry, kids' education in general, providing them with a creative outlet and the opportunity to develop important skills like critical thinking, problem solving, and expression, self-expression. One of the fundamental building blocks of art education is the elements of art, which include line, shape, form, value, uh, space, texture, and color. Uh, by teaching these. By teaching children these elements, teachers can help them develop a deeper understanding of the art they see around them and inspire them to create their own works of art. In this complete guide for teachers, we will explore everything you need to know about teaching the elements of art to kids. We will start by taking a closer look at each of the seven elements of art, providing clear definitions and examples of how they are used in art, And then from there, we will dive into the reasons why teaching the elements of art is so important for kids and how it can benefit them in a multitude of ways. Then we're going to be sharing some tips. Well, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for engaging kids in the learning process and how to create some fun and exciting art lessons. And finally, I'm going to be providing some sample lesson ideas um, for each of the elements of art, along with the resources and materials to help you plan your own lessons. Whether you're an experienced teacher, art teacher, or you're new to the profession, this guide is designed to provide you with everything you need to know about how to help your students develop a love of art and a deeper appreciation for its many forms. So let's get started on this exciting journey of teaching the elements of art to kids. So teaching the elements of art to kids is an important part of the artistic education. The seven elements of art are line, shape, value, form, space, color, and texture. Um, the fun and they provide the fundamental building blocks of fundamental building blocks that allow children to really create and appreciate art in its all forms. Right by teaching children the seven elements. Seven elements of art. We're going to help them develop that deeper understanding of art in its various forms. And for example, they could maybe learn about how artists use line to create depth and perspective, and how color can really convey emotion and mood and add texture um, and depth and interest to their work. By gaining a solid foundation in the elements of art, children are better equipped to understand and appreciate art throughout their lives. So teaching the elements of art also encourages children to really explore their own creativity and to develop their own unique artistic style. By providing them with the framework for understanding art, uh, children are empowered to experiment with the different techniques and media to express their own ideas and emotions. This can be an especially important outlet for children who may struggle to express themselves in other ways. So next is, moreover, really, teaching the elements of art can help children develop important skills beyond uh, the artistic realm. So for example, learning about about color theory can really help them develop and understand um, how color works together and how to create a cohesive design. Learning about form and space can really help them understand the three-dimensional objects and the relationship between objects in space. Um, And all these skills are really important for building uh, critical thinking and problem-solving skills that will serve children well in all areas of their lives. In short, teaching the elements of art to kids is part of a is really like a vital part 
of their artistic and personal development and it really provides them with the tools and knowledge that they need to um, appreciate and create art while also fostering creativity and critical thinking and self-expression. So we're going to dive in on the seven elements of art. They are, again, the fundamental building blocks that allow artists to create and appreciate art in all its forms. Each element has its own unique characteristics and can be used in a variety of ways to create depth, texture, color, movement, and more in a work of art. So we're going to go over a brief overview of the seven, <laughs> seven elements of art. Ah. If you were listening and not watching this, I was just holding up. That's the only reason why I said black. No big deal. Number, number one is line. Line is the most basic element of art, and it refers to a marker stroke that is made on a surface. Lines can, of course, vary in width, shape, texture, length, direction, all of the above, and can be used to create a sense of movement, emotion, and depth and form. Shape refers to the two-dimensional area that is defined by a boundary such as a line or color. And shapes can be geometric such as squares or diamonds or circles or organic such as shapes that are found in nature. Three is form. Form. Form refers to the three-dimensional aspect of an object including its height, width, and depth. Forms can be geometric such as cubes or spheres or organic such as shapes found in nature. Space. Space refers to the area around and between and, and within objects and it can really be used to create a sense of depth and distance as well as to create the illusion of three dimensions on a two dimensional surface which is like implied depth or space, right? Implied form. Five is color. Color refers to the hue, saturation and brightness of an object. Colors can be used to create emotion and mood, contrast, and can be combined in various ways to create harmony, discord in a work of art, and more. Value number six refers to the lightness or darkness of a color, and of course it's going to be used to create contrast and depth and form in a work of art. And number seven, texture, yeah, best for last. Texture refers to surface, <laughs> quality of an object and can be visual or tactile. Texture can be used to create interest and depth in a work of art and can be achieved through a variety of techniques and materials. Understanding the elements of art is essential for artists of all levels and can help students appreciate and create art in all its forms by gaining a solid foundation in each of these elements students can develop their own unique style and voice and create works of art that are both technically and aesthetically pleasing. So why teach the elements of art to kids? Teaching the elements of art to kids is really important for a number of reasons. One, it allows kids to really develop a deeper understanding and appreciation for art as they learn about the basic building blocks that artists use to create works of art. This knowledge can help students analyze and interpret art as well as create their own works of art as uh, with intention and purpose. So in addition, teaching the elements of art can really help children uh, develop important skills that extend beyond the art classroom. For example, learning about color theory can really help children understand the science behind color, uh, the science of color, and how it, how it is used in a variety of fields from design to marketing. Understanding the concept of form can help children understand the 3D world around them and how objects are constructed. And learning about line and shape can really help children uh, develop their spatial awareness, which is important for activities such as reading and math. Overall, teaching the elements of art to kids can really help them develop a range of skills and knowledge that can benefit them throughout their lives. All right, tips and tricks for teaching the elements of art. So and oh my goodness, teaching the elements of art <coughs> to kids is what happens when you yell at the camera. You lose your voice. <laughs> uh, teacher problems. Okay, teaching elements of art to kids though can be fun and rewarding experience, but it also can be challenging. <laughs> uh, here are some tips and tricks to make help make that process 
more engaging and effective. Why I'm laughing is zero clue, guys. Uh, it's just because I've been reading for so long. Anyways, number one, make it hands-on. Kids learn best when they can experience things for themselves. So provide them with a variety of materials and encourage them to experiment with different techniques. This will ultimately allow them to explore the elements of art in a meaningful way and develop their own artistic style. Two, real life examples, use them. Use them real life examples, so guys. The elements of art are all around us, to be honest, from shapes of buildings to the colors of nature. Pointing out these examples in everyday life or even as you're doing a demonstration is like pointing out like, oh, right now I'm exploring with lime, or right now these are, I got a, you know, a contrast between organic and geometric shapes going on here, whatever it is. Point it out can really help and reinforce kids' um, understanding of how these concepts can apply to the world around them. Three, break it down. Each element of art can be broken down into smaller concepts that are easier for, for kids to understand. For example, color can be broken down into hue, saturation, and brightness. And by breaking down each element, uh, you can help students develop a deeper understanding of how they work. Number four, use games and activities. Games and activities can really help, can make learning about the elements of art more fun and engaging. For example, you could create a scavenger hunt where students have to find examples of different elements of art in the classroom or around the school. I love scavenger hunts and moreover, I've done the amazing race with this kind of stuff before. Anytime I can hide kids' questions on them or like I make task cards and then I will hide them around the room. And for kids who I know are fast finishers, I'm gonna stick them like under the table. <laughs> You know, like grade five, so you know you wanna, you gotta, you gotta get them, especially by the end of the year. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna play with you now. It's so fun, they just get so excited. I love it, right? Because they love that challenge at that age, right? But I wouldn't make it so hard for grade threes because we're not maybe or grade two or one. But I don't wanna make them cry over it. But I, I, that's what I mean. Like the grade fives, you can start playing with it, <laughs> playing with them a little more without them crying over it. Or you know, you could be like hot, cold. <laughs> just fun, right? And so you can yeah, have a scavenger hunt where they find examples of different elements of art around the classroom or school, or they can go find task cards or prompt cards. I love it. Any any of the above. Anytime. It's it's fun, right? So next one is, or if it's high school, you could do like a still life scavenger hunt and stuff like that. So you can scale it up and down for the age, right? Make it appropriate for that age you're teaching. Uh, next is encourage creativity. So while it is important to teach the basics of the elements of art, it's also important to really allow for student choice, allow for creativity, experimentation, and allow them to experiment with different mediums and techniques to encourage them to express their own unique vision and style. Okay, so some lesson plan ideas for teaching the elements of art to kids. Now, if you have gotten distracted by your device or by life, or whatever, you know how I get distracted, so don't, you know, if you got distracted, I hear you, that's me. <laughs> it's all good, is what I'm saying, my point is it's fine, but come back to me now, because I'm gonna give you some lesson plan ideas for teaching the elements of art to kids. Uh, so grab something to write with, um, or your phone, use Google Docs, whatever docs you wanna use, that way it syncs up to everything, that way you're not like, oh, it's on my home phone, I have to get it on my school computer. No, just make it online right away. And we're going to talk about it, or if you just want to read it, you can go to my blog post show notes on my blog, MrTastic.com. The link will be just below in the description of this episode, whatever that is. If it's on uh, Twitter, Twitter, maybe. Uh, it could be, but on the video. I mean, YouTube or your favorite podcast player, it's everywhere. Or um, if you're on Artastic Collective, just grab pen and paper or head on over to my blog. Um, but anyways, uh, here we go. So number one is color wheel creation. So you can have students create their own version of a color wheel using paint or even markers or wax crayons. You could layer wax crayons to make colors or pastels. Like I often do that, soft or oil. And this will help them understand the relationship between primary and secondary colors as well as complementary colors. 
Number two, line exploration. So have students experiment with different types of lines. It's just like free for all exploration. Or you get a theme if they're a little bit older, right? Like you can have it, use that to pattern an animal, like their favorite animal, for example, whatever it is. Um, uh, but they can experiment with like straight lines, curves, zigzag, whatever it is. And then also give them a choice um, between a variety of mediums or materials such as pencil, uh, fabrics, uh, paper, pen, markers, whatever. And create a, just a drawing that showcases their understanding of line. Number three is shape collage. So you can provide students with a variety of different shapes and ask them to create a collage using these shapes. Um, this will, and that could be at any age, right? Like the bigger the shapes, the younger the age. But if you make it very small, now you have a very complicated, more complicated project for some older kids, right? They pre-color them all, pre-cut them all, then arrange them. Now you have a very complicated art project. Same concept, but you're scaling it or scout, you know, you're scaling it up or down for the age that you're teaching. So you could, that's basically going to help them like understand the concept of shape and how it could be used to create interesting compositions that way. And you can even bring color theory into that. Like maybe they only use warm colors. So now you're taking two elements, shutting them together and you can even embed a theme into that, like uh, nature, for example. Uh, number four is text texture hunt, text hunt, texture hunt. Take students on a texture hunt around the school or outside and ask them to identify different textures, such as rough or smooth or bumpy, or they could try to draw them if they're older, samples, sample drawings, right? Um, and then take pictures of these texture, take pictures of these textures and then print them off back in the classroom so they can have them um, as reference images, or if they're younger, they can use them to create a collage of the textures that they found on your walk together. Number five is form sculpture. So you could have students create a sculpture using clay or another sculpting material. This is going to help them understand the concept of form and how it can be used to create 3D objects. Yeah. Um, next is number six is value drawing. So you can provide students with a black and white photo or object and then ask them to create a drawing that showcases different for values of gray. This is going to help them understand the concept of value and how it can be used to create depth and dimension in drawing. So by using these lesson plan ideas, you can really help your students develop a deeper understanding of the elements of art and how they can be used in a variety of ways to create interesting and engaging works of art. Um, what? Where did I go? Woo! Where am I? Lost my notes, guys. My fingers are too slow or fast or something. <laughs> All right, resources for teaching the elements of art to kids. So there's a lot of resources online available for teaching the elements of art to kids, both online and offline in our wonderful different world that we now live in. One great art resource um, is, of course, Mizzertastic. Yeah, Mizzertastic.com is my blog. It offers a variety of lesson plan ideas, worksheets. There's a lot of freebies there. There's a free art teacher guide. Um, there's a free lesson, art lesson pack you can find there. Um, all kinds of things. So, and other resources for teaching art to kids. Definitely check it out. Um, but my website really features a wide range of lesson plans that cover the elements of art and other important concepts in art education. Each lesson plan, of course, um, includes detailed descriptions of activities and necess necessary materials. Anytime that you're using Mizzertastic on CBT, these are all the things you're going to get. They will always have a step-by-step -step instruction for completing the project. And in addition to Mizzertastic TPT or Mizzertastic or Tastic Collective Art Curriculum lesson plans, I also have a variety of other worksheets and resources that can be used to reinforce the concepts that, you're, how are, that kids are learning in class. Um, and they're really all designed to be engaging and fun, making it easier for students to learn and retain um, important information about the elements of art. Um, so if you are wanting that, you can check out MizzerTastic.com. Again, there's some, a lot of links right away. When you hit that, when you go there, they're going to be like offered a lot of free resources. And I highly recommend that you dive in and download them. They're free printables, so check them out. Um, and that being said, in conclusion, where am I? I lost my spot again, twice in a row. In conclusion, though, for real, my friend, we are at the end of this episode. I know it's been long. But in conclusion, teaching the elements of art to kids is really a crucial aspect of our education as it provides a foundation for understanding 
uh, the principle, uh, the elements of art, and creating meaningful and engaging uh, works of art. So by using these tips and resources outlined in this episode, you can totally help your kids develop that deeper understanding of the elements of art and how they can be used in a variety of ways to create beautiful and inspiring artworks. Of course, with the right guidance to um, and support, your students can become confident and skilled artists uh, ready to explore and express their creativity in new and exciting ways. Well, my friend, that's it for this episode, and I will see you in the next.